Okay, we're going to look at the topics of osteokinematics and arthrokinematics. Osteokinematics are what we did in the first joint motions lecture, the large gross motor motions at each joint, flexion extension, ABA deduction, um, medial and lateral rotation. Arthrokinematics are the are the much smaller motions that occur between the joint surfaces that uh, allow us to have a very robust movement um, pattern within most of our joints. Okay, so let's look at this. So gross movements of the bones at joints, as I said, flexion extension, AB adduction, medial and lateral rotation. Arthrokinematics are these small motions, um, what they call roll, glide, or slide, and then spin. And one example is if you look at the tibia and the femur, if you place that round, nice round condyle, the femur, on top of the flat tibial plateau, and you go through flexion and extension, it will roll, the femur will roll off the tibia, which obviously doesn't occur all the time when we're moving. So in order to keep that um, femoral condyles centered over the tibial plateau, you have a little bit of spin, roll, and glide to keep that um, joint centered. So let's go through the synovial types of synovial joints. We have a gliding joint, which can basically rotate and twist, and those are the flat articulations in our skull, um, and they only one plane of motion occurs at these gliding joints. Um, another example is between our carpals and our tarsals. Um, those have gliding motion. Second type of joint, type of synovial joint, is the hinge joint. So you have a convex and a concave surface, one plane of motion again, and it's typically flexion and extension. And so here we have the hinge joint of the elbow joint of the humerus on the ulna. Another hinge joint is obviously our knee joint. We have a pivot joint, which again is one axis. And examples of that are between um, the proximal portions of our ulna and radius that um, are right next to the humerus. And so you see the um, radial head and the little notch on the lateral portion of the ulna and that radial head rotates or pivots within um, that notch of the ulna and that allows pronation and supination. Another joint, an ellipsoid joint. An ellipsoid is taking us into two planes of motion at this type of joint. Um, we can do flexion and extension and AB and adduction. And if we can do those two motions, we can also do circumduction. Um, the ellipsoid joint restricts spin. And so this is the ellipsoid joint between your, your carpals and your radius and ulna. And at that joint, your wrist joint, you do not have pronation and supination. That rotation comes from the radial ulnar joint. All right, moving on, a saddle joint, which is, is kind of similar to the ellipsoid joint, but it's special in that it has, on each surface, has a concave and a convex surface, very similar to a horse's saddle. So if you think of a horse's saddle, it is convex anterior to posterior and concave medial to lateral. So it has two, um, a concave and convex surface on, on both surfaces, and that basically increases your range of motion. So you still have two planes of motion, but they are much larger. And one is your carpometacarpal joint um, or your thumb joint. Your thumb joint has a huge range of motion. All right, and speaking of your thumb, that is the one joint that does n is actually 90 degrees out of phase um, with the other metacarpal phalangeal joints. So if you're an anatomical zero and you just naturally um, stand there, your thumb will be in front. And so flexion and extension of your thumb actually occurs in the frontal plane. 
that's the top image. AB and A deduction actually occurs in the sagittal plane, second image. And then we have this special um, motion of our thumb joint, which is opposition. And so you can touch your pinky, a pose, you know, it's your, um, um, it's a special motion that, you know, they always joke that your dogs and cats cannot do that. All right, final synovial joints, ball and socket joint. Um, the most famous is our hip joint. We also have, um, so at that hip joint, you can rotate in all three planes, flexion extension, ABA deduction, and medial and lateral rotation. We also have a condyloid joint, which is a con uh, the surface, it's similar to an ellipsoid joint, but it's very shallow. So it's still limited to two planes of motion, flexion extension, ABA deduction, but that third degree of rotation is limited by ligaments. So your carpo um, phalangeal joints, you can flex extend, ABA deduct, and the rotation is limited by um, a ligament.